Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to show you how to make a signal ring with the heart shape and cut them in half with the flush setting. So that way you can wear as a couple ring. Are you ready? Let's get started. To starting this ring, we will need to build the entire heart shape and then we can separate just right in the half. So that's starting from the scratch. So we're going to come in into the front view and you're going to draw any shape that you think will work for you. Uh, as a heart shape, you can have the puffy heart, you can have some sort of a more narrow heart. So it's up to you for what you like. Uh, after you draw, you can always use in control point to edit to make sure that they are they are they're fitting into the design that you want. All right, so I got a really puffy heart here and I'm just simply going to mirror to the other side, something like this. This is super puffy. And I'm also going to join them and rotate it something like that. So that's where we want to cut it right in the middle, right? So I simply just going to pick up this with align with the horizontal center hit the zero and that will be the profile. Now the second thing we wanted to do is to creating the ring. So for the ring size I want for this demonstration is going to be diameter for 16 and I'm going to move in this heart. Apparently it's a little bit too fat so I'm just going to 3D scale and fitting into whatever size that works for me and move it to the position that I want. Okay, so that's first step. The second step, we need to creating the bottom of the ring shank. So I'm going to use the arc tool, snapping into the zero, roughly about this thick, holding my shift. And I want to click on this and uh, curve, and it will have the uh, control point coming up. We want to pick up this top three, this three on the bottom, and then we're going to move it up a little bit so my ring will be a little bit taper at the end and then we're gonna come in into the perspective and look at what we have all right so now we have the bottom of the ring shank we also need the ring shank coming to outside so let's go ahead to use the curve tool you have extended curve and there's a one from arc to the point so we want to extend it from here to this point right here so make sure your end points on okay and you want to click on this end to this end. All right. So now we have this. Uh, we just need to work on a half of a ring. And so I'm just going to uh, explode it, this one. We also need the one in the middle to control the middle um, ring shape. So I'm going to use the ellipse tool. And you have an ellipse diameter. And you're going to snap it into the quadrant to the quadrant. And we're going to have it something coming out a little bit fat like this. All right. So now this is our ring structure. We got this one. It's going to be our rail. So we will need to split in half by the point. So we're going to snip in right here. So then we have everything that we need. Let's go ahead to create a surface by sweep to rail. You got rail one rail 2, cross section 1 and 2, and don't forget to click on the point and coming back to the quadrant right there. Oh, it's showing that the curve is not working because this one is open, this one is closed. All right, so we need to split that one as well. That's using the split command. This one will be split by this one will be split by this one and this one. So then it will turn it into two. All right, so it's a Good mistake to show you, um, try sweep to one more time, rail one, rail two, open curve, open curve. And we want to go into the point. So make sure that end point is there and then we'll get something like this. Okay. Once you click okay, um, you could adjust it if you want to, if you record a history, but I'm just gonna walk in whatever this shape here. Uh, all we need to do now is to mirror to the other side. So I'm going to snipping into the zero, uh, mirror to the other side and join it. To close the top that we have, since it's completely flat, we can use the cap command and then we can close it. All right. And then to punch a ring size coming out, we are going to pick up the uh, inside ring rail 
And let's go ahead to using the solid tool. You have extrude planar curve straight, and we want to create on the both sides. So it's equally extended uh, the surface into the solid. And then we can use a Boolean difference, like this one will be difference out from this one. So all we need to do now is to separate them into two pieces. So I'm going to creating a box and that is cover, that's big enough to cover entire ring right there. And simply I'm just going to uh, Boolean split, like this ring will be split by this guy. All right, so now I'm going to delete this and I'm going to have two half right there. Okay, so let's go ahead to uh, pick up all the curve and let's hide it. All right, so now I have a two ring. One is going to be red color. The other one is going to be this. If you like the ring by itself, that's fine. You can just fit it the edges and send it off for print. If you like to set a stone, Go ahead to download the stone. Uh, in the description below, you sign up a newsletter. There's a file for you to download it, and you bring in the stone size to the size that you want, right? And first things first, uh, let's make sure the vertex is checked here on the bottom. And I want to draw a circle that is roughly about that size. So I'm going to snapping into the vertex in my front view. And I wanted to about this size. So that is exactly with the stone size and that's coming into the front view. I'm going to move in this one up like here. All right, so this is the curve that we have. I'm going to extrude it first, okay? And then so I got that surface there. Let me put it into the ghost view so you know what I'm doing there. All right, so that's the first thing so we wanted to do is creating a color for our stone. I'm going to pick up exactly the same curve and I'm going to extrude it one more time halfway of the stone and remember to hold the shift key and click on this one and drag it in for whatever that tilted angle for my stone. After that I'm going to extrude it one more time and this time I want it to be a, a bit longer uh, somewhere there so I can cut through entire ring. All right, so now we got this piece, this piece, this piece. Let's go ahead to join everybody. This will be our cutter, and we want to use the cap command to close it. So now um, the perspective that, that you see is a stone and it's surrounded by this color. And then I wanted to color to move it down something. I want to girdle and set it just right at where the stone is or a little bit lower. It's up to you. All right, depends on your preference because you need to have the uh, bird to cut the seat a little bit. Sometimes I will intentionally make this slightly smaller, just a little bit smaller. And so you have some room to cut. All right, so then I have that one simply just going to mirror to the other side. Look like the eyes there, it's super cute. Anyway, so we going to um, pick up the bowling difference, this one and this one. And this is our cutting tool, and we're gonna open it up like that. After the stone setting, um, your jeweler will have the bright cut, which we can kind of mimic that by chamfer the edges. And I want something really small, so 0.1 there. So it will look better on the rendering uh, if you mimic this bright cut over there. All right, might be too small, might need to have point two, but you get my point. Now you have two separate ring here. Uh, you can make it a couple ring or you, you can, you know, wear one on the right, one on the other side, uh, on the left hand uh, side. So it's up to you. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you like my video, there's a lot more tricks and tips in the membership program. Click the link in the description below and join the membership. Hope to see you there. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.